Answers to the homework. So I was actually quite amazed at how many people submitted answers to the homework here. Um, tons and tons. Perhaps this series won't be a YouTube uh, suicide after all, like I said. So <laughs> thanks so much uh, for, uh, for all your good effort. Um, and for those of you who didn't submit answers to the homework, well, there's still plenty of time. Um, cue the music. Yes. Um, all the people who answered the homework questions were men. Uh, come on, ladies, don't reinforce the stereotype here of women not being good at math. Um, if there's anything that I could do to make this uh, series more uh, female-friendly, uh, please let me know. But, um, yeah, you need to represent here. So, at any rate, uh, on to the actual answers for the homework questions now. Uh, homework question number one. Um, there are two tables. One table has these pennies on it, eight pennies with our, which are turned heads up. And the other table has these pennies on it, uh, sort of a random-looking uh, assortment. Uh, question number one. Uh, which sequence was likely to be done by intelligent design, and which was likely to be done by coin flips? Okay, so I got all kinds of very interesting answers here. Most people would say that, uh, you know, all heads must have been done deliberately. I mean, how could they all have just been turned up heads? Uh, you know, but, you know, maybe God likes, you know, something that looks like this, or maybe it spells out some name or something. Who knows? You know, I mean, who really knows, right? Question number two, what is the probability of generating the first sequence by random coin flips? And the answer is uh, 1 over 256, or 1 over 2 to the power of 8. And question number three, what is the probability of generating the second sequence by random coin flips? And the answer is the same, okay? So both of these, uh, even you know, the non-random looking one and the random looking one, both have the same probability. So question number four is, so based on your answers to question number one and two, do you think that low probability is a good sign of intelligent design? And uh, the answer is just inevitably no. I mean, you can't tell just on the basis of probability alone whether something was designed or happened by chance. I mean, just looking at these coins that are here, you don't know just based on the probability of them being generated by random coin flipping, uh, whether they actually were generated by random coin flipping. So. Uh, this pretty much scotches all the arguments that you say, you know, well, such a low probability of DNA ever arising or something like this. I mean, uh, bottom line is low probability events happen all the time. Okay, so, I mean, for example, think about the odds against you being born, right? <laughs> There's nothing, you know, of, of less odds than that, but, but it actually happened, right? You actually were born. So, uh, we do have some sort of, you know, prior intuition about what kinds of things are created or what kinds of things are artifacts, you know, like a watch is, was made or a car was made, something like this, and what kinds of things are, you know, part of nature, you know, stones. But we just don't sort them out by probabilities. We just can't do it. Probability theory is the wrong tool for this. We need more uh, sophisticated tools, and uh, it is Dembski's ambition in his book to give us some more sophisticated tools here. So... So after you've done this homework, you now have all the tools you need to read Dembski's first chapter, all but the last section of it, with 100% understanding, okay? So please read through it, and in the next lecture, uh, we'll, we'll discuss all but the last uh, section of uh, chapter, Dembski, chapter 1 of uh, Dembski's book. See you then.